What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Lumios Post where we talk about all things Pokemon and today we are going to be talking about Iron Thorns and kind of just the crazy history surrounding this mon. Uh, it, I, over the last few months I've kind of touched on different uh, theories or just interesting tidbits about different Pokemon. You know we've talked about uh, Roaring Moon and what Roaring Moon implies for the Mega Evolution phenomenon. We've talked about Iron Bundle and it's uh, weird connections to an ancient civilization despite being from the future and we've even recently talked about Screamtail and its potential connections to Mew as well as just what it means for uh, early Pokemon. Now today I wanted to go back to the future Paradox Pokemon and look at Iron Thorns because this is kind of like the ultimate future Paradox in my opinion. It's honestly weird to me that this wasn't uh the Iron Valiant of these games, with Iron Valiant being like one with higher stats, and then it's also uh, found in a special room, and it's very rare, and it's supposed to be like the counterpart to Roaring Moon. You would have thought that'd be Roaring Moon and Iron Thorns counterparts, because Iron Thorns, it's, it's Mecha Tyranitar. We have really, really been wanting that for a long time, a, a Mecha Tyranitar, and that's, that's kind of the interesting thing, is this is something that Game Freak has wanted too for a really really long time it, literally since gen 1 and that's that's what we're getting into today so first back in gen 1's development a uh, pokemon was creating several different mons that just didn't make the cut in gen 1 not too surprising obviously i mean they're just starting out every gen there's tons of pokemon that were scrapped and sometimes we'll see them but sometimes we won't and we'll never hear of them again but one of these pokemon was a pokemon inspired by mecha godzilla and you know mecha godzilla obviously being from like the godzilla i guess franchise uh, you know kaiju and pokemon there's a lot of close ties there's there's a lot of kaiju like pokemon uh because game freak game freak does like that stuff and they like to pull from it and usually those are the designs that kind of hit hardest if you will i mean even the dynamax phenomenon and gigantamax phenomenon which of course was the main gimmick of the generation 8 pokemon games uh, we or rather just sword and shield i guess there were pokemon growing big it was it was kind of like their answer to kaiju and even some of these you could argue were based off of kaijus like specific kaijus with many people arguing that uh g max butterfree was based off of mothra people arguing that uh g max duraludon is based off mecha godzilla and there's a lot to uh suggest that is indeed the case but more on that later and even now with these Violet Paradoxes, you can make the same argument. You know, you have Iron Moth, so there's your Moth, or you have your uh, Iron um, Thorns being your Mecha Godzilla, and you even have a uh, Ghidorah in Iron Jugulus. So, you know, there's, there's even some rumors around a Gorilla Pokemon having gotten a Paradox, so there would have been your King Kong. So, it just makes sense that, you know... Pokemon clearly has some kind of love for this, and, and again, it traces all the way back to Gym 1. They were going to make a Mecha Godzilla Pokemon. For whatever reason, this Pokemon was cut. It it obviously didn't come into fruition. But then in Gen 2, we started getting our first Godzilla Pokemon in Tyranitar, and there were a beta Pokemon for a uh, King Kong-like Pokemon that ultimately didn't make it, but Tyranitar was put in the game and was made a very big deal, you know, it's the pseudo-legendary of Johto, and it's definitely a fan-favorite Pokemon, people love Tyranitar, and then you move into Gym 4, they make slacking, so they have, you know, kind of their answer to King Kong, if you will, definitely didn't get the love and attention that Tyranitar did, but that makes sense, because Godzilla's just the coolest kaiju, let's face it, and then you move into Gen 4, you're getting a little bit of a break, and then Gen 5, interestingly enough, Mecha Godzilla is brought back, but not in the way that you'd expect. Uh, in the Black 2 and White 2 games, you had Pokestar Studios, which was a little movie studio where you could go and you could make movies with your Pokemon and you could see characters pop up like Sabrina from Kanto and Bryson from, you know, just Unova. He's just in a serious city. But all of this, and one of the opponents you can face is a Mecha Tyranitar. And it is giant. Even in the anime, we see them make a movie with a Mecha Tyranitar that is gigantic in size 
clearly supposed to be their Mecha Godzilla, and you know it, it's not a real Pokemon, but fans loved this thing. Like this was kind of always talked about this Mecha Tyrantar. You know, people wanted robotic Pokemon, and specifically they wanted a robotic Tyranitar. So then we have Alola and Kalos come by, and then we get to Generation 8. There, we had Duraludon. And I guess you could make the argument that they were giving some more kaiju love with uh, Mega Tyrantar back in Generation 6. But in Gen 8, you have a Pokemon based off Mega Godzilla, Duraludon. And again, it gets a G-Max form because... What's more kaiju than being gigantic and being able to destroy cities? So that that just makes sense. And they we know this is based off of Mecha Godzilla because they even reference the fact that Duraludon Tyrantar are natural enemies, like in the same vein that Zangoose and Saviper are natural enemies. So all of this is pretty cool to me that like they always were wanting a Mecha Godzilla design, but it seems Duraludon didn't satisfy them because then in gen 9 they scrapped duraludon and uh you know it's it's not available in the game and they make iron thorns a true mecha godzilla because it's literally a mecha form of their godzilla pokemon and they kind of have some references to pokestar studio there's a character who wears a pokestar studio shirt so, you know, it's almost as if they're acknowledging, like, hey, remember that other game where we did a Mecha Tyrantar? Well, now it's for real. So, yeah, it's crazy to me that there's been this huge hype for a Mecha Godzilla Pokemon. And then finally, it kind of turns into a hype for a Mecha Tyranitar Pokemon. Then we finally get it. And I feel like everybody's been sleeping on it. The fans have been wanting it for so long. Game Freak's been wanting it for so long. It's a really cool design, in my opinion. I think, yeah, no, it definitely, I don't even have to think about it. Uh, Mecha Tyranitar, or Iron Thorns, if you will, is definitely my favorite of the Violet Paradoxes. So on that note, let me know what your favorite Violet Paradox is. And also, let me know what you think of Iron Thorns in general. Do you think that this is the Mecha Godzilla Pokemon that we need, or... Do you prefer Duraludon? Would you have preferred it just be the Mecha Tyrantar from Pokestar Studios and it's just lost to time? Or did you like the beta design from way back in Gen 1? I just, I wanted to do this video on how I thought it was really interesting, Pokemon's history with Kaiju, but specifically with Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla. So yeah, be sure to also like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos we do talking about the different Paradox Pokemon. They're all really, really cool, and there's a lot to them, so I'm, I'm sure we'll do more videos on it. And until next time, I'll see all of you later.